in other news, the World Bank has warned developing countries to prepare for real risks that an escalation in the European area debt crisis could tip the world into a slump on the same level as the global downturn that happened in 2008 and 2009. We do know that experts do believe that there will be a mild recession in Europe this year. So joining us on the line from Washington to tell us more about the state of the world, following on from the World Bank's Global Prospects Report is Alan Dennis, an economist at the World Bank. Alan, thanks so much for joining us. Now, we know You're that uh, the world will be growing a lot slower this year. But we also heard that last year. And what happened in Africa is we saw average growth rates at about 4.5%, some countries even growing above 6%. So in general, sub-Saharan Africa managed to buck the trend. Will that happen this year? Yes, you're right in um, alluding to the resilience of um, sub-Saharan Africa. Indeed, in 2011, um, growth in sub-Saharan Africa increased about 49 uh, percent. Uh, if you exclude South Africa, we are talking about a growth of 5.9 percent, making Sub-Saharan Africa one of the fastest growing um, developing uh, regions. Over a third of countries in Sub-Saharan Africa in 2011 uh, grew at above 6 percent. So those are pretty um, impressive growth rates if you look particularly at what is happening at mm -hmm. the global level. In terms of um, 2012, um, we expect that um, um, barring any um, further escalation and uh, the situation in high-income countries, uh, we forecast that this underlying strong growth in sub-Saharan Africa will continue in 2012. Nonetheless, uh, we have to be um, aware that there are significant downside risks to growth in sub-Saharan Africa. And um, depending on the severity of the downturn, if it is uh, much beyond what we envisage, we could see growth um, drop into about 3.6% um, in Sub-Saharan Africa for 2012. But our baseline assumptions is that um, growth in Sub-Saharan Africa will continue to remain um, strong in 2012. And there are a good number of countries that um, they'll be having new mineral exports coming into our stream, including um, and Sierra Leone, Angola, right. um, Ghana, Congo, etc. And that is going to help to accelerate growth. Right. There's going to be a return to growth in Cote d'Ivoire um, from a minus 5.8% in 2011 uh -huh. to about um, um, 4.9%. Okay, let's, let's talk about restraint, Alan, because uh, commodities will be drivers of growth, but other factors that have driven growth, consumption and also government spending. Let's talk about consumption and the ability of this new growing African middle class to spend. Um, Wages are not rising in Africa, and inflation is. So right there we have a discrepancy. Well, actually, um, even in 2011, where we did see some strong um, inflation um, numbers, particularly in East Africa, um, we still saw signs of or evidence of strong consumption. Now, we don't have a lot of retail sales data on individual countries, but if you look at the uh, strength of import demand, which is sort of a proxy to the strength of domestic demand, um, you saw that import demand was very strong. By our own calculations, if you just look at, take an example of, um, say, car imports, which mm. normally consumers in South Africa will spend on, we, uh, we see car imports increase, increased at about 31.2% in the region mm. in 2011. So and the, the growing middle income, which um, has been the case over the past um, couple of years, right. we expect those underlining dynamics, which is driving that to continue. Mm. Now, this doesn't mean that Sub-Saharan Africa is um, immune from a severe downturn in the global economy, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the, the extent to which it will be affected will also depend on the extent to which we see uh, the degree of, um, of, of the downturn. Let's talk about demand for African goods because Europe accounts for about 37% of trade with Africa. Obviously, those figures will decline as Europe grapples with its own uh, economic issues. Some have said, look east, greater trade with uh, China and India and Asia will help sustain Africa. But will it? Because we're also told to expect a slight slowdown in demand from Asia as China and India grapple with their own inflation. Pressures. Yes, that is true. I mean, there's going to, Africa is going to take some hits from the global um, um, slowdown in the global economy, no doubt about that. But one of the things that we've observed over the past couple of, of years, which is helping Africa sustain its um, strong exports 
um, over the past recent years has been the diversification of its um, trading partners. If you, for example, 10 years ago, um, the EU accounted for about 40% of exports uh, from Sub-Saharan Africa, mm. and China accounted for just about 5% in 2002. Now you switch the tables to today. What right. we're saying is the EU, if you take all exports, not just the non-oil exports, EU accounts for 25%, uh, whereas uh, China accounts for 19%. So that gap has been substantially closed, and it shows that mm. countries are diversifying their trading partners. That makes them less uh, in, uh, less um, affected by right. a slowdown in a particular region. And one thing I may add still on the trade front is that um, particularly in East Africa and to some extent in Southern Africa, increased um, regional trade amongst countries there is also um, strengthening right. um, trade. If you take Kenya, for example, I mean, it, trade with its East Africa partners is, is larger than trade with mm. the UK, Netherlands, Germany, France and the US and that's quite significant. Okay, Alan, a final question. Policy options available to government. This is an election we are for many African states so we're going to see a lot more public spending. At a time where we're seeing austerity measures kick in in Europe and others, calls for fiscal restraint probably won't be heard in Africa this year. So the extent to which dri government will be a driver of growth and then also what needs to be done on the interest rate front in, in terms of combating inflation and probably in terms of getting more revenue streams, taxation. So what are authorities needing to do? Yes, um, that's an excellent question. And um, obviously we are living in, um, in, in more difficult um, times. If, if you look at um, in 2008, before the crisis, most developing countries were, had uh, more fiscal buffers compared to this current situation um, now. And so it, what each country will have to do will obviously depend on the fiscal space that it has. Um, the macroeconomic stability is always going to be the foundation for economic growth, so you don't want to jeopardize your macroeconomic stability. If you have fiscal, um, the fiscal space, then by all means, um, in the event of a significant slowdown in the global economy, one can uh, undertake um, counter-cyclical fiscal policy. Mm -hmm. But in the event where you do not have that fiscal space, then one has to be prudent um, in actually um, n not going overboard with your fiscal expenditures. And, but that doesn't mean that um, the vulnerable in a society need, uh, have to be um, affected significantly. Social safety nets mm -hmm. have to be put in place to protect the most vulnerable in right. the society. And if you have monetary policy space, to, um, that is something that you can also use in event of a significant downturn. But I'm aware that many countries do not have that monetary policy space. And in some countries, the, right. the, the transmission mechanism for monetary policy may not be as effective as, um, um, as fiscal policy. Um, but also, but, but, but one of the things you can do is also to improve upon the tax base in the okay. e economy. Yep. Okay, I'm sure we can have this conversation again sure. as the year progresses. Thank you very much for availing us your time. Alan Denny, World uh, Bank economist, joining us there on the line from Washington, D.C.